I'm going to read first from the book of 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. Um, we're going to look at something realigning your life with the calling of God on your life. Now, not everyone is called into a full-time uh, ministry where you're preaching from a pulpit, okay? But you are called full-time in whatever you set your hand to. We'll just have a look at that. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I'm a brand new person and I'm never going to have a problem again. All right? There's some things I have to deal with of my past. There's some attitudes that I have to change. There has to be a renewing of my mind because we, our mind is not renewed when we're born again. Our spirit is new birth. There's a new birth. But our minds have to be renewed to the Word of God. Then he says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We all have that ministry. So we, 24-7, no matter where we are, where we work, we have a ministry that God has given to us. And that's the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, and then he says, and the ministry of reconciliation is this. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So when we come across, we don't just go out in the street and preach and say, okay, it's when we come across in our work where we are, when we come across somebody that God puts in our hearts, and Lord, open the door. Open the door that I can tell somebody about Jesus. And, it's, so, so, and that's a full-time job. And through our work that God works in us, through what we do, that we represent Jesus Christ, we shine the light in this wicked and corrupt generation. When people see that some people are honest, they want to know, but that's amazing. That's strange. It's strange to be honest in this world today. But when we do that, we shine the light of Jesus Christ. So we have a ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against us, has committed us to us the word. First of all, the ministry, now the word to tell others. The, the word of reconciliation. Then he says, now we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become and be made the righteousness of God in him. So we have a ministry. Regardless of apostle, pastor, preacher, and all that, we have a ministry as believers in Jesus Christ. To share the love of God. To share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's our ministry. So wherever we come across a situation that God opens the door, Peter says, always be ready to give an account to those that are in the, in the world. Give an account of, what, of the faith and the hope and the love that is inside of you. Give an account of that. Don't be so consumed. Like I was uh, in a doctor's consulting room, and I was so consumed with me. And when he asked me, what church, what type of church are you from? Uh, he totally floored me. And I said, uh, well, we're not Catholic. <laughs> and after that, I thought to myself, really? Is that the best that you can do? When somebody opened the door for you to bring the gospel, who is of another faith, and all you could say, you're not Catholic, God help us. <laughs> God help us. So we have a ministry of reconciliation. And there is a calling on every one of our lives. There's sometimes a specific calling. There's sometimes a measure of the gift of Christ. In other words, you may have a motivation to be more evangelical or a motivation to be more uh, prophetic or apostolic. Uh, you don't have to have the full measure, but you can have a measure of it as just an ordinary believer that you're more concerned about missions or more concerned about the lost or more concerned about the doctrine that is right, that it's taught right. So these are ministry gifts that we have a part of. And we'll be motivated because it's God who works in us, both to will and to do, of His good pleasure. So He's going to work something in you. 
Now, one of the, the, the guys that began to preach was um, this leper that came to Jesus and he said, if you will, you can make me whole. And Jesus healed him. And then Jesus said to him, now go show yourself to the priests as a witness to them. In other words, as a witness that Jesus Christ is alive. That his power, he's the anointed one, he's the Messiah. And what did this guy do? It says, um, but he went out. Jesus said, first go to the priest. But he went out and began to publish it much. And to blaze abroad the matter. I love that. To blaze abroad. He told everyone about the salvation that he's received and the healing. To blaze abroad in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city. But was without in desert places and they came to him from every quarter. So he was, his testimony was so powerful that you couldn't show him up. And he just began to blaze abroad. And I think sometimes when we get so blessed or God does something, a breakthrough, we just want to blaze abroad to the world. I did that when I got born again. All the chains of darkness that were broken, God just set me free. And thank God, I just blazed abroad, whether they wanted to listen or not. And if I got them on the train, that was the worst, because they were cornered. And I stood and I preached. They said, I don't want to hear that. I said, I don't care, but you're going to hear it. You're going to hear that God's alive and Jesus Christ can deliver. And praise God, I blazed abroad. So, and, uh, so, but God will give you a specific calling within you. God will work within you, something that He wants you to do. Something that, that um, for example, if, if someone is called to work with um, the elderly, or work with patients, or with, there's a calling, there, there's a gift. The mercy of God, the fruit of the Spirit, operates in that. I mean, it's an unthankful job. Unthankful job where people are seeing this. But you know what? Everything that we do, that God has called to do, is accounted for us and accounted for reward. And God is working in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure. When we went to Bible school, the first Bible school we went to, all the students there, man, they could flash out of their Bibles scriptures where God called them and show you the scriptures. And I never had anything. All I had was the witness of the Spirit that God called me. And I said, Lord, but I need a word. But I really have, because the Holy Spirit bears witness with your spirit. That you're a child of God. So the Holy Spirit's going to be a witness with every, whatever God has worked in your heart. To help to do whatever it is. Okay? And to be a witness. And even through your job is the most powerful witness. That when people see your life and they look. Let me tell you something. If you're a believer, you don't have to preach it. You just live it. They're going to question you. How come you face this? How come? Because Jesus Christ is Lord. And the one guy said, he said, how come I've watched you for nearly two years? I've watched your life. And I was about to leave the company. He says, uh, I don't understand. What have you got? I said, Jesus. He says, no, no, I'm Jewish. <laughs> he said, I don't care. <laughs> Jesus Christ is who changed me from glory to glory. I said, you don't want to know the old man. <clears throat> Thank God there's a new man manifesting. So the calling of God on our lives is very, very important. Because we are accountable for that calling. You know, I've heard so many people throughout the years, nearly 50 years of ministry, that I've heard so many people say, you know, the Lord called me for this and the Lord called me for that, but what have you done about it? You see, um, many times people believe that God's just going to put you in the ministry and you're going to stand behind a pulpit and you're going to preach and teach and all these things are going to happen and signs and wonders, and you don't have to do anything about it. No. We want to watch Paul's ministry just to have a look at the call of God on Paul. Now, he was on his way to persecute the church, and he was busy persecuting the church. He had letters from the chief priests that anyone he finds that has some measure or talks about Jesus imprisons them. He had the power to do that, to put them in prison. And he was doing all this. The church actually was in fear of him in the sense that they don't want to get around this guy. 
And here he's on his way to Damascus. And he's a young man. He's full of zeal. He's blazing abroad his agenda, his thing that he's going to do, his mission that he's on. He's going to fulfill that mission. And he's so proud of it. And yet he meets Jesus. And he falls off his horse. The great, the light of God, the, the life of Jesus just manifests. And they all fall off. And he hears the voice and the call of God on his life. And he says, but who are you, Lord? He says, I am Jesus who you are persecuting. He didn't know. He thought he was working, doing the right thing, working for God. But yeah, he meets with Jesus. And then he, he is blinded by this. God gives him a call, which we'll have a look at now. And he goes to Simon. Uh, I think it's, no, it's not Simon the Ten. But anyway, he, he, they lead him to a place in Damascus. And then God appears in a vision to a man named Ananias. And he says, listen, I want you to go and lay hands on this guy. That his sight will come back, and that he's that um, uh, that he's filled with the Holy Spirit, because he's already converted, he's already accepted Jesus when he saw that, and so and then I says, no, 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 I know this guy. We, I don't want nothing to do with him. God says he's my anointed servant, and something he says to Ananias, which is very interesting, in Acts chapter nine verse seventeen, he says. And Ananias went his way. Um, okay, Acts 9, verse 15. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go your way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And then he talks about, And I will show him what great things he must suffer for my name's sake. What great things. So people take that and they think, okay, we must suffer for the Jesus. We must suffer. I'm just suffering for Jesus. I'm just suffering for Jesus. No. When you do the will of God, you will face persecution. Everyone that is, does the will of God will face persecution. So it's just part of the deal. Yeah, but I don't want to have persecution. Well, then just don't do the will of God. So God showed Paul that you are going to face some great, great tribulations. Remember what Jesus said to all his disciples? <clears throat> he says, in me you will have peace. But in the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome all. I've overcome the world. So there's certain things when God calls us to do something. We may be rejected. We may be cast aside. Or th there may be things that happen. Let's not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God. It is the greatest gift you can give to any person on this earth. To tell them about Jesus. Just to know simply about Jesus. He can change your life. Yeah, but I don't want a church. No, it's not about church. It's about Jesus Christ. Now when Paul, um, he was put in prison and uh, he was now appearing at Festus, at the judgment seat of Festus. And then King Agrippa was there. Now Agrippa um, was the son of Agrippa, King Agrippa, that cut the head off of James. Okay, this was the son. And he appears before him, and he gives an account. And he says uh, to King Agrippa, um, Whereupon, I, as I went to Damascus, and with authority and commission from the priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them that journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in a Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul. Why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you persecuted. Now he says, He said, Who are you? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. But rise, stand on your feet, for I have appeared unto you for this purpose. God has a divine purpose for every one of us. 
Paul, as a Pharisee, he was a very, very well educated man, um, loved God, so he thought, and did everything possible. But Jesus says, I've got a purpose for you. He's got a purpose for every one of us. We're not by accident here in this world. We have a divine purpose. And then he says, this is the purpose, to make you a minister. Now you can't read this from there, uh, except if you had your eyes done. Okay. <laughs> um, to make you a minister and a witness, both of these things which you have seen, and of those things which I will appear unto you, delivering you from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send you. So, he had a ministry to the Jews and, and, and to the Gentiles, but mainly to the Gentiles. Now he says, this is the ministry. Open their eyes and turn. This is repentance. Turn them from darkness to light. And turn them from the power of Satan. That's the authority of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. And an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So this is his divine purpose. This is in a nutshell what Jesus Christ has purposed for the Apostle Paul to do. Okay. So, and there may be some scriptures that, that link and that witness with you and say, yes, I, I believe this is, but, but this is the gospel. This is the simplified gospel to turn them from darkness. That's the main key. Why would you witness to anybody if you just want to brag about what God's done for you and not, and not what he can do for them? So, <clears throat> to turn them from darkness and to turn them from the power, that's the authority of Satan, unto God, that they may receive forgiveness and an inheritance. It's not just forgiving. God wants to, we are heirs of the Father, joint heirs with Jesus. But there must be a turning. There must be a willingness to turn. I always thought, I'll repent first, then come to God. No, you have an attitude in your heart, Lord, I need you. And God says, I want you to turn from darkness. Yes, I agree. But I have no power. But when you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, you can. And you can overcome. So, therefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient, like so many people. I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first to them at Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles. So he just continued in Damascus, Jerusalem, all the coasts of Judea, and then he went to the, to, to the um, Gentiles. He was obedient. And this is what he said. And this is the key of the gospel. This is what he says. That they should repent, okay, in their hearts. Turn to God and do works. And this is where some people fall very short. Do works meet for repentance. In other words, when I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, there must be a turning from darkness. There must be a turning from my old ways. And the willingness is in our hearts to turn from that. Lord, help me. I don't want that past. I don't want those things any longer. Help me to overcome. God never intended us, expected us in our own strength to overcome these things. That's why he empowered us with the Holy Spirit. The power of God present to heal, to deliver, to turn us, to help us turn. And then for that fruit to manifest in our lives. So that's the core of the, the Apostle Paul. And he says, I was obedient to that call. And uh, I mean, evangelized in so many cities, started churches all over Asia, um, all over the, the Roman Empire. He started churches, ministered. Um, he wrote uh, almost two thirds, if you take the book of Hebrews, which I believe Paul wrote. There's no other person had any wisdom compared to what uh, the book of Hebrews has. And um, all of that, two-thirds of the new covenant. How, how would we have doctrine if we didn't have Paul's writings? Which he took from the old covenant and had the revelation that God gave him in the new. 
And he's had that amazing revelation. Even Paul said some of the things that, uh, um, Peter said some of the things that Paul preaches are hard to understand. But he knew it, that he was divinely anointed of God. Had a passion for God. Blazed abroad wherever he went. Established churches and then he, he established the organization in the church. Deacons, elders, um, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists. All of these things he established in the church. He had revelation of them. The, the disciples had a limited revelation because of their limited understanding of the old covenant. He had a full understanding and revealed by the Holy Spirit. And he was faithful to do all of that. To do everything. Um, defend the faith. Uh, set up a standard that he said... If, and and the, the false apostles and all of these guys that came against him, um, he still carried on. He didn't say, yeah, but now you see, I was preaching the gospel and this happened to me. And so I'm not going to preach it anymore. I'm not going to. Listen, he faced all of these things because Jesus had already said in this world, you're going to face tribulation. And he says, in your ministry, you're going to face great tribulation. He knew it. But he's going to pursue what God has called him to do anyway. And then he says, in all of that, in all of the accomplishments and everything that he did, he says um, in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 23, where they were talking about, oh, the, we've got these apostles and those apostles and these preachers. And, all, and then he says, listen, it's enough now. I just want to tell you, are they ministers of Christ? <clears throat> I speak as a fool. I am more. And now he's comparing himself to all the other ministries. And some of them were false ministries and false teachers. And he says, in labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequent. In deaths, in other words, he faced situations of death often. And you think he was a preacher of faith. Of course he was. But he faced these things. These things came upon him more abundantly in the labors. Uh, of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. 39 times five. I don't know how many that is. But anyway, it's a lot. Okay. So don't say you want to be like Paul's ministry. Then you must be prepared to face what he faced. Rather be what the ministry of Jesus Christ wants you to be. And it doesn't have to be from a big pulpit or preach all over the world. It's just the pulpit that you have is in your job, in your home, wherever you go. That's the pulpit that we have. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Okay, I got more stoned than that. But anyway, three times I suffered shipwreck. <laughs> a night and a day I have been in the deep. Now, if you've ever been in the deep in a storm, you'll know what it's, Brian, you know what it's all about. Okay, Alan, you know, terrible. Okay. He was in the deep, in the sea, just hanging on, whatever it was. But because he's pursuing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the commission that God gave him, in journeys often, in perils in water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, He's facing all of this just to be obedient, to fulfill the call of God in his life. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst. This wasn't because they fasted. This was because they didn't have. In hunger and thirst. Then he says in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without that which comes upon me, the care of the churches. Where the devil brings up, oh, this is happening, that's happening. And all this care. All of these things he faced just because he wanted to fulfill the mission and the ministry of Jesus Christ. I've run the race, he says. I've finished the course. In other words, everything that Jesus has given him to do, he finished. And I want to, by the grace of God, finish everything God gave me to do. By the grace of God. There's no other way that we can do it. But uh, fulfill and accomplish everything. And sometimes there, there, there's hindrances. There's um, disabilities. There's 
whatever may hinder, but we can still pray by the grace of God. We can still pray the ministry, pray whatever, and pray for our families, pray for our friends, pray what God has put on our hearts, because that's part of the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's part of the gift and the power of God. And the messenger of Satan that came all the time against Paul. And the messenger of Satan was to buffet completely. Just every time he stands up to preach, they buffet him. They buffet him. They buffet him. Every time. I remember in, in, in Vintage for, for um, the first three years of our ministry there, it was like I was preaching against a brick wall. People opposing, opposing, opposing the word, opposing the word, not agreeing, uh, getting other preachers to oppose us, uh, not allowing our, our stuff in the, in the bookshelves, in the bookshops, just opposing, and then the breakthrough. But you just keep going. doesn't matter, as long as we're doing what God has called us to do. And then Paul says to Timothy, in 2 Timothy 3 verse 10, um, but those who have fully known, you've known, You've known, fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose, divine purpose. Timothy, you've known that. I have a divine purpose. I'm fulfilling that. Uh, my faith, my long-suffering, my charity and patience. So the, they were a blessing to wherever they went. Even if they had to do their own job, their own uh, um, making tents, in order that they wouldn't be a burden to the church. And he says, you've known those. And the persecutions, and you've known about the afflictions, which, which came at me at Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. So I want to encourage you today that no matter what you do, all these things that come against you is not because you're doing something wrong. Many of these things are doing, because you're doing something right. But God will deliver you out of all of your tribulation. Whatever tribulation you face, God will deliver you. And you can be encouraged in that. That God will deliver us out of all the tribulation. Some tribulation we face, we kind of think, how will we ever do it? How will we ever accomplish what God purposed for us? But you know what? By His grace. And this is the key. One of the things that Paul said, I take pleasure in tribulation. So he, there was so much tribulation that came against him. He just realized, well, I'm just going to glory God, for, uh, glorify God. Jesus said that, that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. And Paul said, man, I should have learned that a few years ago. I wouldn't have had all these troubles and been so uh, depressed. Or, uh, there were times that he faced it. But he now says, I glory in tribulation. In other words, it doesn't matter what the devil puts. I have victory because Jesus Christ has delivered me and will deliver me out of all of these tribulations. No matter what comes my way. And he says, uh, great is my bold. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 4. Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with the comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulations. He, he's ecstatic. Why? Because he knows when he praises God, the power of God comes on behalf. And what more when the Philippian jail, when they were praising God, broke those chains. And there's some chains we need to break in the name of Jesus. Some things that have been hindering us, we need to break it by the power of the Spirit of God. And then what Jesus says, uh, what Paul said, of all the accomplishments of everything that he fulfilled, he said, I am the least of the apostles. He didn't consider himself the greatest. And this is why he considered himself the least. Even though he accomplished more than all of them. He accomplished far more. He says, I'm the least of all the apostles. That I'm not meet to be called an apostle. But because I persecuted the church of God. But regardless of the past, it's gone. Regardless of that. Regardless of what the devil says. Yo, but you did this, you did that, all that stuff. He says, but... By the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. The Spirit of grace. The Holy Spirit, even in the Old Covenant, called 
um, the, the, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Grace. Zechariah 12 verse 10 and Hebrews 10 29. The Holy Spirit. He says, I labored more than all, but because of the grace of God. So he's not drawing on his own. Gee, look at my accomplishments. Gee, I'm so wonderful. He's saying, no. It only came because of the grace of God. And he empowered me. So God will empower us to do what he's called us to do. He will empower us and give us wisdom and an open door to bring the message of Jesus Christ. The power of God. Whether they respond to it or not, that's not the issue. The issue is that we bring that word. A word of reconciliation, a word of comfort, a word from the Lord. And that these three things, they should repent. If they want to know Jesus Christ, they should repent and turn to God, turn from something, turn to God, and do the works meet for repentance. Our works is what we are rewarded for when Jesus returns. Not our faith. Faith without works is dead. And we can't do the works without the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And then we don't touch the glory of God. We don't say, oh, we've done these wonderful things. Thank God. Paul did more than all the others, but he acknowledged the power of the Holy Spirit, which was with him. He still did it. He was the vessel, but he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And God wants to empower us to do what he's called us to do and fulfill that call. In 1 Timothy 2 verse 7, Paul says, He was ordained a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher. He never said he was a prophet, but he was ordained for those three things. And he fulfilled them. And he started out his ministry as a witness. Just a witness. And then it went further to preach an apostolic ministry. That is one that is sent. One that is sent for the mission. So you could be sent to something, you have part of an apostolic, you're not an apostle, but you have part of an apostolic ministry. But that gift will manifest if the anointing of God is on you to be an apostle. Amen. So, let the peace of God navigate your heart and rest in the assurance of what God has called you, He's worked it in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. That others can know that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that they have an inheritance with God and forgiveness of sin. Amen. Let's